Here's a game I played against Grandmaster Lev Albert in 1986 uh, online uh, under a club uh, or service called Chess Link, L I N C. And uh, I forgot it was, if it was part of a division of CompuServe or AOL. But you paid a, a small fee, maybe $15 or so, and you, you got to play against the Grandmaster. Uh, tonight, uh, Lev Albert was only playing against, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 people, 7 people. Okay, I'm playing black. Mr. Albert opened up with his king pawn. I always liked uh, symmetrical king pawn. Had mixed results with the Sicilian. And I also don't mind playing against the uh, Rui Lopez. I sometimes play the bird defense. So here we go, the two knights defense. Uh, sort of a surprise. <coughs> Occasionally I played bishop to c5, the Wilkes bear. And uh, tonight I decided it's just to go for the classical. It gives black some, some uh, attacking chances. Attacking the bishop. Uh, I expected the usual, uh, I'll give you an example, one line, of course if the bishop moves back, uh, white, black can take the pawn off. Um, the bad part of course is the knights on the rim, but it forces white to do something about the bishop. If he brings it back, it can be taken off. Um, black can get rid of the misplaced knight. The usual continuation is bishop checks, pawns interposed, push back, here, attacking the knight, f3. Essentially what this does is black gets a ton of developing moves for the uh, pawn minus. Uh, his pawn structure is screwed up of course and he has a knight uh, floating on the rim over here. And this is usually the position <coughs> that results. Uh, black wandered all over the board. What is was white knight. He made a couple moves. and But black has is developed but, that's what I expected, but that's not what happened. After I took the pawn off, he did not play check, he played this move. Which uh, I did not know much about. The um, theory is that, or one of the ideas, if uh, black takes this pawn off, white goes here, queen f3 attacking the knight, would it be twice, and threatening mate. So this pawn can't be touched. This pawn can't be touched. So. I could take the bishop off right away, but I decided to kick kick the knight first. Knight came back. <coughs> and now I pushed. With the idea of if white takes the pawn, I get the bishop. I expected maybe queen to uh to e2. But, lo and behold, he took the pawn, which 
fooled me immensely. I didn't expect that, but that's that's what he did. Okay, so of course I took the bishop off. He attacks my knight. Where to go? Back to the rim? No. So there's two choices. It's either here to d6 or to b6. Um, if I go to b6, one uh, example line, say b6. One example line, the white would just start pushing pawns and start a pawn roller. Uh, actually, this is similar to the uh, Four Nights uh, game. There's a Halloween variation called the Halloween variation where white actually sacrifi sacrifices a knight in the middle and, and pawn storms the, uh, the black king. This is just an example. Uh, say check. And this might come out equal. D say bishop here. Bishops are exchanged off. Castles. Uh, this might be an equal game. 3, 6, 8. White has 8 pawns. Black has 6. And white has uh, actually a lot of mobility. So, I played here, which looks horrendous at first, thinking, ah, what if he goes here, forking my, forking my knights? Well, if he goes here, I have an escape route, which would be here. That would be the, the, the escape route. So instead, he protects the uh, the pawn with the idea of pushing pushing the c pawn all the way up. So I decide to give back. Uh, Now I pin. Now what? He can't interpose the queen, taking off. He can play knight back. Or he plays there. So I attack the queen. With the idea of the queen moves, I just take the knight off. So how you cannot protect this knight. This was a blunder, I believe. He played here. <coughs> I took the knight off. He took my knight. We have an even exchange, threatening the queen, and he comes back. And at this point, uh, material is even. Uh, dead even. I was pretty happy with this, this position uh, as opposed to getting tangled up with the knights. I don't want to exchange queens. His king is still in the middle, which is a, uh, a problem. He finally castles uh, kingside. I take control of the uh, e-file. He interposes the bishop and also attacking the pawn if he gets a chance. Threatening bishop to uh, h3. Of course if he, which it threatens mate, if he pushes the pawn up I take the rook. If 
pushes this pawn up to f3, protecting here. I could there's a sacrifice with the rook, uh, which takes the queen off for protection. Okay, here he goes. He starts his uh, attack. Well, I push the knight away. His knight goes to a commanding square in the center. Well, I now bring both bishops uh, pointing towards the king. Again, uh, asking me if, if I want to trade queens. I decide to threaten mate instead. Um, he easily defends against the mate threat. The pawn push with the idea of continuing to f4. He gets his uh, attack rolling. I push the pawn up. Bringing the rook over with the idea of uh, possibly pushing the pawn up. <coughs> Which he stops immediately. This sacrifice, uh, I don't know if he missed it or he decided it wasn't that good. Of course, he can't go king here to the mate, so he has to bring the king over to uh, h1. Now he has to somehow... <laughs> he can't protect this area. He can't bring the rook over because of mate. He can't bring the queen over here to uh, e2 because the rook is commanding that file. So how do you get control of this file? Uh, he chases the queen. With the threat of rook over. Check. He prevents uh, the rook over. And now it's just, it's just finish. Uh, he has no, he has no moves. And that was he resigned here. I thought it was a pretty interesting game, but I, I'm still puzzled as to why he allowed the sacrifice. Uh, perhaps he, I know he was playing in a simul, but perhaps he did not think it was entirely sound, and that he had counterplay. Actually, if White had his pawn rolling a little quicker on the queen side, uh, also with this pawn here, if that got rolling, uh, I believe he would have had a huge amount of counterplay and I hope you liked the video any comments uh, please leave at the end I also uh, uh, use this reference when I was playing in the in the 80s uh, encyclopedia chess openings uh, right I still believe I still have the original the original books of course the uh, theory uh, evolves and uh, a lot of the information is outdated but if you like to play the Two nice defense, Max Langs, uh, anything uh, similar, similar patterns. Uh, Roman uh, Zinzavilli, Zinji, uh, has one of his labs, Roman Labs number 80. It's pretty interesting, and he has some uh, opinions you may or may not agree with. But it's great for the club player, since he tells you the, the ideas behind the moves, which is the main the main thing, the ideas behind the moves, not just learning uh, uh, analysis and uh, saying, well, you play this and your opponent plays this and you get a one game. Well, you can end up playing the correct book moves and once you get your uh, so-called one game, you don't know how to win it. You don't know the ideas of the position. And Roman does a great job of uh, explaining that. As a matter of fact, he has a lot, lots of free uh, videos on YouTube and uh, if you like his style, uh, I would recommend getting the uh, two nights. Okay, thank you very much.